brother's wife gave birth to a little girl. <laughs> Thank you, man. And we've been out drinking since the birth. The kid's fucking seven now. Uh, <laughs> 1986 and I went to the comedy store in London, I was 17 years old and I walked in and I sat down and I laughed like I'd never laughed before and I looked at the guys and I went, that's a good job, so um, that's what I'm going to do. So that was it really and then uh, it took a couple of years, you know, when you're 17 you don't really have a lot to say. Mm. You know, there's not a lot to really say about life. You can't. No one wants to listen to it. No know. one's interested yeah, in a 17 year old saying, hey, Isn't it funny when well, you haven't know, lived yet? Yeah. You know? so, so it took a couple of years, probably till about 88, 89, until it started to get good. Um, and the comedy scene in Britain in those days was very, very small. It was only London. That's all you got was, was little pub gigs in London. A bit like this, really. You know, yeah. I mean, this would be like. Amazing, a massive gig, yeah. yeah. You had the story, you had jonglers, you had Canal Calf, you had the, oh, there was the Soho Ho, which was my club that I started in 19. Soho Ho. Soho Ho. Mm. That's a Scottish name, you see. <laughs> and the Soho Ho, which, which is still running today, I think, wow. um, 20 years later. And, uh, and it, so we all just kind of like flew around these pub gigs, mm. just doing, doing that. How um, many would you get a week? Oh, a week. I mean, you know, you could get, you could, I've done six in a night. Shit. Yeah. You'd never get that involved. No, you'd never. I mean, I'd open the comedy store and then I'd go, and that would be eight o'clock, and then I'd go up to Soho Ho and do a set there yeah. at nine. Then I'd go to John Blur's and close the John Blur's early show, and then I'd go off and do another one. Then I'd go back to the store at the late show, yeah. and I'd open the late show there and I'd close the late show at the com- uh, that, uh, John Blur's. Yeah. And that was like six gigs a night. People did that. Yeah. Doubled up, tripled up. Yeah. We were all running around cash in our pockets, you know. So you were getting paid too? We were getting paid. As open we were getting paid. I mean, this was in those days we were getting paid. You know, we'd be getting like sort of 80 pounds or 50 pounds, 100 quid there or whatever. Yeah. You know. But in those days, that was, that was good dough. You know, yeah. we, I mean, we were in our 20s. We were just running around with, with all this cash and having a great time. So, yeah. For the Melbourne comedy scene, as an open <coughs> micer, I've been doing it seven months. Mm. Uh, we don't get paid. No. Yeah. No. Uh, to get paid would be crazy. No, you've got to cut your teeth. That's the thing. Is okay. You've got to, to work it. I mean, you've not got the scene that we've got in, in the mm. UK. I mean, by a long way, you haven't. I mean, I've done uh, shows done in South Africa, and they're in a similar state. You know, they're 10 years behind us. Yeah. Um, 
I mean, you know, even America has gone boomf back behind us. Really? Yeah, America has. Yeah, yeah. No, their 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 scenes their scenes not as vibrant as it used to be. Why do you think that is? Change. It's a, another decade. Another decade. Another group of kids coming through. Yeah. You know, into the teen uh, from the teens into adulthood. And yeah. Comedy now is so popular. It's on the internet. Yeah. It's on camera. It's on this. <laughs> Hurrah, you, know, uh, <laughs> you know, it's 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 everywhere. It's on your phone. Yeah. You know, and there's it's big arena shows now. Facebook, know? everybody's funny on that. Everyone's that everyone's a comedian now, you know, but it, it, it has. It's it's taken a comedy to a different <coughs> level, you know. Money has basically kept comedy around. You know, what money. do you mean by that? What I mean by that is that money has um, has come in and people have seen the potential to make money out of it. Mm. Uh, with the talent that they see, like someone like Lee Evans, you know, they go into oh, right. That this guy is going to be going to be huge. We can fill the O2 Arena in London. Yeah, twenty thousand people for five nights, yeah. all paying twenty five uh, bucks a, a pop. You know. Yeah, yeah. So they, they, you know, they, they're making money out of it, and they're kind of stealing from the clubs because people that say would go to comedy five times a year would go to a comedy club like this. Mm. Ongoing, they're going once a year to see the guy from the telly. Yeah. Yeah, right. So that's that's kind of pushed comedy, that's pushed stand up. And all they'll watch their favorite comic on YouTube. On um, YouTube, that's there enough. you go. You know, oh, what's his name? Got him on the phone. So you kind of have to work harder as an individual comic you do. these days. Absolutely, yeah. right. you have to. You have to work hard anyway. I mean, I have yeah. to work hard. I mean, there's there was no there was no easy ticket in. Mm. You know, and and. and you have your more. There are five stages in show business. Okay. Okay. Stage one. Jeff Boys. Who is Jeff Boys? That's stage one. Stage two. Get me Jeff Boys. Mm. Stage three. Get me a Jeff Boys type. Mm. Stage four. Get me a young Jeff Boys. Mm. Stage five. Who is Jeff Boys? Back to the start. Back to the start. Okay. And it's what you do within those five stages. That'll make you or break you. What stage are you at? I'm probably who is Jeff Boys again. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna find that out. Yeah, we will. Yeah. So who did you look up to when you were starting out? Starting out, uh, Billy Connolly obviously was a huge yeah. hero. Uh, he came to one of my shows once, which was fantastic, and uh, nicked one of my gags, which was even better. Oh really? Yeah, Good he job. did. Yeah, he did. <laughs> um, awesome. Yeah, you know, my agent was going to sue him. I said, shut up, it's Billy Connolly. <laughs> Fuck <laughs> off, it's great. Yeah. Uh, Dave Allen, if you don't know who Dave Allen is, Google him, watch him. He's a genius. Google him. Uh, Maybe there's something in common. What's that? He's got the cut off finger. He's got the cut off finger. There you go. And you can do that one. So maybe that says something about cut. my future career well, there you go. as a comedian. There you go. <laughs> You've got a missing finger. You're going to write some jokes about it. Well, here's one that Dave right. Allen did, okay. which was, uh, was uh, I went to a haunted house once. Yeah. He said, oh, you're a haunted house. And all of a sudden I felt this movement. Something was crawling up me. And I was terrified. Frank the death was. <laughs> so I grabbed it and bit it, and that's how it was. Oh, shit. That's a funny story. <laughs> <laughs> I might steal it. Well, <laughs> I'll edit that part. Well, he's dead now. Yeah, so he'll, he'll, never know. Know. he'll never know. He might like it. He might love it. His, his <laughs> ghost might be right now. Yeah, this place is haunted. It is. Yeah. So that's the uh, so that's basically the five stages of, of, of show business, not just comedy, but uh, but any any some you know business in show is, is the way you've got to run through it. Okay. Mm. So what would be your most important advice for anybody starting out or getting into the game of comedy? Okay, well, um, <laughs> the, the thing I would say is, uh, you know, on stage, be you. Okay. Don't pretend to be a comedian. Be one. Be one. Yeah? Yeah. When you, when you open a door and walk through it, you don't pretend to open a door and walk through it. You fucking walk through it. So walk That's through true. the door. Walk right? Through. So that's up there, walk through the door. Just be you. Don't pretend. Uh, talk to them and not at them. Okay? And what I mean by, if I'm talking at you, I'll be talking like that. And I've seen so many stand-up comics going like that. And they are all so boring. Imagine if I was talking to you like this all the time. You'd tell me to fuck off. Right? So talk to them and not at them.
gather the audience into one and make them one person. Okay? So all those laughs you're getting is one person. So you're talking to a person and enjoy it. Yeah. That's, that's the main thing. Is enjoy what you're saying and enjoy their laughter. When you see them laughing, they'll make you laugh. Don't just stay over the top of them. And hear it. Watch them. Watch them falling around. I mean, one of my yeah. favourite moments on stage here is uh, looking out and uh, when I do my um, the old lady spinning on the thing in the in the tram. It, that for some reason is a joke that women adore. <laughs> All over the world, women just love that joke. It's it's a women's joke, and I don't know why, but it is. Yeah. And I just love looking at women crying heaps around at that guy. Yeah. And that makes me laugh. And that makes me funnier. And it makes me yeah, energetic. Makes me, and, yeah. the, and the, the excitement between mm -hmm. the two of us. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like what we're having now. Yeah. You know, we're, we're discussing something. We're getting excited about yeah, it. Yeah. The energy's good. You know? And we're, we're, we're doing it. Yeah. And, that, and so that's what you want with an audience. You yeah. want to have that one-to-one -one, uh, feeling with all of them. So what's been your worst gig that you can remember in your whole career? Well, it's got to be a corporate, I think. And, a corporate you know, gig. Corporate gigs okay. are really tough, you know, yeah. because they haven't come to see you. You've come to see them. You know, this is yeah. their award ceremony. Yeah, this exactly. is their Dickie Bow night. Yeah. You know, and you're fucking there. And there's no warm up. There's no nothing like that. So it's, I did I did one for um, for uh, a darts the, the World Darts Championship in yeah. London. Wow. Yeah, and I. Um, and I turned up, and there's all the players. And I'm not a darts fan, I don't know. <laughs> but there's all these guys with their wives and their yeah. inmates and all of that. And they're all having it in the Dorchester Hotel in London, um, which is the hotel in London. It's where Robert De Niro stays, right? So it's, yeah. it's that place. Yeah. It's fuck yeah. It's got a bit of status. Right. And, and, um, and I turn up, all in my suits and boots, and... Um, and there they all are, and they couldn't give a fuck. <laughs> they couldn't care less. They really couldn't. Yeah. I'm introduced by the MC, and I walk up there, I start talking, and they're all All you can hear is, like this, and, uh, 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 ping, 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 ping. and you know you've got a long half hour. You had a half an hour spot half to people who didn't give a fuck. They didn't care less. Yeah. So what did you do? How did you handle it? I won them. You won, won them over? Them. Yeah. I, I won them. But it was tough. It was tough. It's like a workout. Yeah, mm. it was a workout. That's a good. That's a good analogy. Yeah, it was like, I was really pushing mm. to get. So what you do in that situation is you find someone who's into it. Okay. Yeah. Even if it's one person, then you talk to them, and then they start laughing, and you get a connection with them, and then the person next to them will go, "Oh, hang on a minute, she's watching," oh, oh. and then he'll join in, and then. And you can spread it around and people will start to... Don't ever tell them off. Don't ever tell an audience off. Yeah. Never ask them a question that you can't answer yourself. Okay. Is anyone here um, ever um, uh, eating popcorn? You know? Mm. You don't have to ask that question. Just say, do you know when you're eating popcorn? Because mm. everyone's fucking eating popcorn. Yeah. Don't give them a chance to say no. Yeah. Never give a child the chance to say no. Give them a choice. A child, you, do you want a Mars bar or do you want a Milky Way? Which, which, which sweet do you want? Mm. And they have to choose. All right? No, don't go, do you want a Mars bar? No! Never give a child the chance to know. Never give an audience the chance to say no. Because they will. Yeah. Are you ever eating popcorn? No. There'll always be one fucker. Back off. There'll be one fucker that'll do that. Yeah. So don't do that. Just tell them about your popcorn experience. What about experience. hecklers? Hecklers, well, let's stop with that. Because that's the number one thing I think the anxiety for a lot of new comics like myself uh, is hecklers. I haven't had one yet. Right. I've had uh, audience interaction, and it's always kind of been like on my side. Yeah. But I've never had anyone like, back off. Um, Show us your tits. Yeah. I haven't well, had it. It will happen. I know. <laughs> it's coming. It's on its way. <laughs> yeah. Okay? You deal with it. Um, okay. So you get choice to have an all comment, mm. uh, you know, let, let them in, open the door, walk over, smile, it's always smile when you kill. Mm. Okay. So always smile when you kill, sorry, okay. ask them That's to repeat dangerous, it. Boys no, listen, ask them to repeat it, okay. because it's never as funny the second time. 
if you told the same joke twice, people, you get a big laugh once and you get, oh, Jesus. Uh. You know, do that to them. Sorry, what was that? Ask them to repeat it. What was it? And everyone will suddenly turn around and look at them. And then they're in the front. And they've got to be funny now. Uh. And you're just standing there smiling. Sorry, sorry, what was that? Don't, don't be aggressive. Don't be... Oh, yeah. Just, uh, that's the ghost. <laughs> Right, so we'll, we'll, we'll carry on with this. And, uh, so, heck, so what you do is you just smile as you kill, and as the, uh, the heck, repeat the heck, you've lost it. That's the moment you've lost it. And repeat it back. So if they say it shows you tits, you say, sorry, and they'll go, shows, shows you tits. Right? Yes. There is the microphone you get, shows you shows tits. And then give them a stop, put down like Yeah, all right. right don't so, be defeated by them. Just no, in British That's school. cool. And then just go, so, so what do you use for contraception? Is it your personality? <laughs> yeah. And walk away, turn your back on them. Yeah. As soon as you've done it, turn your back, walk off. And smile, and you'll get a big laugh, and spoke, and we'll wash them, shut the fuck up. So there, are there like a, a bunch of lines? Um, they're called stock lines. Stock, they, stock put down Every lines, stock yeah. put down lines. So don't, every comic don't drink, You shouldn't drink on an empty head. Okay. Um, you know, uh, you'll get them online. Okay, just and they're the called, they're all right to you. Yeah, just use them. Right. Just use them. Okay. Because I think the anxiety for a lot of new comics is coming up with, or oh, should I have like my own shit that I come up with? Or, But there's like this. Put down lines are stock. Code. They're called stock. Or you put in a chicken soup. They're stock put down lines. No comic wants to see another comic getting defeated by a heck no one. So yeah, use the lines. And, and if you use them, just tell the company you did. No. So oh, I use that, that and that. We don't get hell. Anyway, I mean I think that it used to be, it used to be a terrible yeah. in, the, in the old days. The old days. So being here and seeing a bit of the Aussie scene, what do you think? Is it different than the Aussie scene back home? Is it rougher here? Is it rougher back there? Mm. Yeah, I can hear it as a, as, a, as a comic that I am. Um, I'm having a wonderful time. The audience is great. Um, my friend Jeff Green, who's, who's uh, my, one of my heroes as well as my, my best friend, he said that uh, Melbourne audiences are tough. Yeah. I haven't actually found that. Okay. But then I'm not doing a one-man show. Yeah, I've done that. I'm, I'm, not, I'm doing a, a, you know, a variety show sometimes. So, and they're, they're really up for it. And they know it's a good thing. So, um, I've not seen that. I, when I did the comics lounge, again, delightful. Brilliant. That's where I did my first gig, the comics lounge. Mm, great space. It was like home for great space. a lot of new comics. They do the workshops there. So that's where I started out. Yeah. <laughs> so what's been a highlight of your career so far? Well, I performed in front of Prince Charles. Which was, in front of Prince yeah, Charles? Yeah. So where was that at? That was in Birmingham at the NEC. And that was um, a TV show <coughs> award ceremony that he was presenting awards for the best endeavour or whatever the bloody thing was. And they called me and said, look, would you come? Because I was doing a lot of warm-ups for Jack D and all of this. And like, hey, Angel, do you want to be on TV? Look. Wait. <laughs> anyway, so that, that would be lovely. She's <laughs> Anyway. <laughs> anyway, so... Um, so I, I was asked to do the warm-up for that show, and Prince Charles was standing in the wings watching me perform. Were you nervous? Yes. I mean, yeah, you know? no, I don't really get nervous, actually. Uh, I, know, I know I can do it. Okay. You know, but yeah, I mean, it was, it was the future king of England, yeah. of Great Britain, I should say. Sorry, we're, we're not out of it yet. Uh, <laughs> uh, political. But um, no, um, he, was, he was delightful. He was a really lovely man. So that was a that was a, a highlight. I think uh, the biggest gig I've done is two and a half thousand was in Birmingham, which was amazing. Uh, to play the Hackney Empire, where Charlie Chaplin stood and where Lauren Hardy stood, I played there on that stage. That was good. Um, Did you feel that energy of all that? Oh, yeah, that of course. You, you're standing on the same boards as yeah. them. That they see them. Yeah. Do you know, it's, it's, it's amazing, yeah. Um, 
I did a film which was great. I was in a film directed by John Madden called Truth or Dare with John Hannah and Helen Baxendale. I was in that. That was, that was fun, different. Um, I was a voice of a dog in a cartoon. Which oh, really? Yeah, Can you it was. Do the voice? It was my voice. Just like that. It was just my voice. What's the cartoon called? It's called Aubrey. Aubrey. Aubrey, yeah. You can you can get it. It's, it's an adult cartoon. It's, oh, okay. It's fun. Yeah, cool. I played the dog. Anyway, so you know things like that. They'll, they'll come along. Yeah. You know, you just you just got to look for them. So I was talking to you the other night. Yeah. And uh, one of my biggest comedy idols, and I think for a lot of comics, this is the same. Um, Bill Hughes. Bill, yeah. So you, because um, you guys were around the same time. I was around. Well, I was. Yeah. I mean, Bill. I met Bill oh, and, well, uh, and I listened to the young Bill. Uh, <laughs> I'm no. jealous. Bill Hicks was was an, a, an incredibly nice guy. Um, he was around Edinburgh in 92 or 93, I think it was 93. And he was good friends with Sean Hughes. They were really close buddies. And Sean was a friend of mine, he was the same agent as me. So we were sort of in the same stable. So we met Bill. But Bill was just, Bill was just like, you know, a guy. I mean, yeah. so, well, that's all he was. Um, an incredibly talented comedian. But we didn't feel in those days that we were in, 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 in the presence of comedy yeah. greatness. Although I went to a show and it was superb yeah. and very, very funny. I've seen comedians in the same state, you know, of, of that kindness. Yeah. But they didn't lose their life. Yeah. And Bill lost his life and we lost a great comedian and a really nice guy. Because he's very big in... Oh, he was huge in England. Yeah. I mean, he was bigger in England than he was in America. And he ever was there. Ever was. They didn't have bars in that home. Didn't care for it. What do you think that was? Why do you think when he went over there, what was it? Well, he, he just captured everyone's imagination at that time. In the 90s, we just had the Gulf War. Mm. And he was, you know, he was just electric. And there, was, there wasn't anyone else around like that that was as tuned in to the finite details of your life. And an American too. You know, was wow. I mean, you know, he just elevated from that Edinburgh festival. He went boom. So was, was that played, that festival? That thing, yeah. and then he played the Dominion Theatre, yeah. and he sold it all out. And you must have seen the videos yeah, of the I've Dominion. Got it, yeah. You've got it. And uh, and he was just saying things that we all felt, but we didn't think we could say. It. Yeah. And Bill said, and said them brilliant, mm. and made us all fall about. Every comedian just went. This guy's good. So Ed Izzard, I remember Ed Izzard, I watched his first meeting spot mm. at the comedy store. And he died on his arm. You know? His first ever gig. His first ever, uh, not his first ever gig, okay. his first try out at the store, at the, at the, at the store. comedy store. Yep. And he was rubbish. Yeah. He was shit. He was shit. Okay. Right? Yeah. You know, and then the next thing you know, boom. How long after that? Not long. Not long. Not long. No. So what, what the fuck happened? Just I don't know. He sold his soul to the devil. Who yeah, knows? Yeah. There is a moment that you know it. In yourself? In yourself, when you're up there. Suddenly, you've elevated to the next level. You know it. You know it. But there's a big part in the writing. If you're not at home writing, if you're not working on your material, because they say never write just at home, you've got to write on the stage as well. Absolutely. You've got to be on stage and write. You, you, you've got to. You see, you'll find that you'll do that when you're um, uh, when you're engaging with the audience, when you're enjoying the performance, when there's a connection with them. You'll make shit up mm. and always remember it. Or get, I mean, Tom Binns the other night asked me to write down something. Do you record your set? Did you ever record, do I don't that? record it. You um, never did? I did, um, but I never listened to it because I hate watching myself, I hate hearing myself. Mm, I know, me too. I don't, everyone yeah. says you've got to record. I'm like, I don't want to do that. I'm cringe. I don't want to hear yeah. it. I don't want to see it. Yeah, let it go. You put me off. Let it go. But come off and write down the lines that you made up on stage. But once you get that engagement with the audience, you'll find that you'll just come out with things. Okay. I mean, the, the spinning women on the thing that I was talking about earlier, that came out on stage. I didn't write that at all. Mm. That came out there. Always be writing on stage. Because oh, once you get into the style of being a comedian and actually doing the, the rhythm, and you've got the rhythm, the rhythm, Moving, the is, rhythm yeah. of being a comedian. One, two, three. Remember, comedy is rule of three. Set up, middle, punchline. It's always three. Guy walks into a bar, 
da 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 there yeah. you go. And you just laughed and that wasn't funny. Yeah. But it was the rhythm of comedy. Yeah, okay. So once you've got that rhythm and you're engaging and you're doing it, you'll get the rhythm and you'll get the jokes and you will come out. Yeah. So what's next for you, Boise? What do you got planned? Well, I'm going on holiday. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm going to Queensland. And I'm looking forward to that. Sorry, I'm just checking the okay. time. I'm um, looking forward to that, and then I'm going back to London. Um, London town. London, back, home. back to London town, <laughs> and then I'm going to Cyprus to do oh. some stuff for the troops coming back from Afghanistan. Oh, that's going to be amazing. It's going to be great. Have you ever done anything like that before? Yeah, I yeah. have many okay. times, and I love it. So I'm doing that, and oh. then back on the circuit in, in the UK. Uh, and getting ready for Edinburgh. Getting ready for Edinburgh. I'm not doing the festival this year, but I'm going to go up and have a look around. Yeah. And then You're uh, party start. For the yeah. yeah. <laughs> so there we go. Yeah, cool. Uh, thank you so much. I think we should go have a smoke now. Let's go get a bag and a beer. And a beer. Okay, bye. Bye. We get a beer. We get a beer. We get a beer. We get a beer. We get a Hey Kai, can you explain to me what Jeff Boys is doing to that man? He's uh, hypnotising him into being gay. <laughs> <laughs> he's, gonna, he's gonna come round and come out. <laughs> he does it all the time. Right Tommy Pauls. <laughs> <laughs> he just turns straight guys with hypnosis and then blows them. <laughs> Jeff Boys. <laughs> it's a little, little party trick. Have you had a great festival? Yeah, I've been hypnotised a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. uh, have you been. <laughs> has been awesome what has he made time. you do? Um, no, I haven't been, I haven't been hypnotised by him. I've done this thing once where I yeah, made us think there was a balloon on my hand. And, like, and I had my eyes closed and I turned like, all my eyes and one hand was high on the other because of the imaginary balloons. Oh, fuck. That's the only hypnosis. Did it I work? I didn't suck them off. No, I didn't. I was trying to make us come out and fail. <laughs> I was trying to make us think there was a balloon on my finger. <laughs> Nailed it. Nailed it. So yeah, how was your festival? How did you find Melbourne? So good. Melbourne's yeah. awesome. Yeah. I spent most of the time like drunk and shit. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. It's, it's a bit blurry, but awesome. I saw the kangaroos yesterday, did I tell you that? Oh no! Did I tell you? You didn't tell me! They're awesome. They're cool, they're like, huh? They look like rodents, but they act like primates. Like this, yeah. There's life behind the eyes of kangaroos. Yeah. Like they're conscious. Yeah. They're conscious being. And, um, My brother and his friend hit one, and uh, it shit all this up the side of the car after uh, they hit it, and it died. It, it would be shit hitting one. Yeah, it was mm. horrible. It was about the size of me. Yeah, yeah. Well, they're, they're all like kind of like petite, so about the size of you. Yeah. And then there was just one that was like a fucking grizzly bear. Like it was actually up here, and it was Shit. just stacked, and you could see its muscles were like all ripped on its leg. They box. And they box you. Yeah, they, they kick the show. You can't. They can sit on my tail and give you a good, like, <laughs> a good leg kick. But um, yeah, I try not to get too close to the ball, but I hung around with them. What else have I done? I went to the neighbour's set. Oh, that's I right. Out on Paul Robinson's lawn. I was like, yeah, <laughs> balls for Paul. <laughs> balls for Paul. And um, then I went wine tasting. Yeah. Blagged it. <laughs> Dressed like a brogan and acted like I was. Uh, what's the word for like posh person? Yeah, just posh. Yeah. Posh. I acted posh. Well, pretentious. Like a I acted pretentious. I was yeah. so pretentious. I was like, oh, this is definitely a single grape wine because it's got a precise flavour. Like, as I find, if you use more than one grape from more than one different yield, then it's got a homogenous hybrid flavour that you can't just put your finger on. So you I was can't. like talking all that trash while dressed in like this. <laughs> so, <laughs> How are you dressed? Let's have a look at you. It's like. Um, <laughs> So what else have I done? Every time I've went to kill that, it's been um, like I've been to the beach four times and the sun just goes in. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. Like I just harness the clouds. <laughs> and um, but I went to watch the skateboard park and I went there late one evening and went to watch the penguins come in. Yeah. Um, were they cute? Do you have penguins back home? No, nah, I thought they were like I thought they were from snowy countries. I thought they were they meant for like Alaska, Alaska and <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I'm trying to remember what the poles are called. Antarctica. <laughs> yeah. And, um, I thought well, for that. Where Santa's it, uh, from? Huh? The place where Santa hangs out. Yeah, yeah, that land and shit. I thought it was all that, but like this is a sunny country and there's penguins. It's kind of like, you know, lost when polar bears just appear on the beach. Yep. It's kind of like that, just an oxymoron. Just, uh, <laughs> so, I'm going to take advantage of this opportunity. 
if uh, for any new comics, because you've done, you've been doing it for about five years, and you've been doing really well. And um, hey, mate. And um, <laughs> so, do you have any advice for any new comics out there? Face. Yeah. Oh, no more than face. That like people always forget. Be funny. Be funny. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah everyone's like, oh, how do I hold the mic? Like, yeah. how do you structure this joke? How do you do that? Just be funny. Just be just funny. Get up there. You make people laugh in their life, surely. That's why you decided to be a comic. Yeah. Then just translate that. Just get up and be funny. Don't be tense. Don't be too worried. Don't look at your feet. Just go up there, big smile on your face, and be the funny person that you are. Sweet. Be you. Cool. That's my advice. Are you you? Am I me? Yeah. I guess so. <laughs> I guess so. Well, thanks, Kai. Thanks, tomorrow. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> He's been hypnotised and he can't count to five. One, two, like Jeff Boy. three, four. <laughs> Think about it. Okay, when I touch you, you're going to know exactly what it is. Five. Five. <laughs> Hello, my name's Jeff Boys, and I just did that, and that's actually real. I'm a stand-up comedian of about 25 years, and I've been in the business for 25 years. I hope that what I've um, shared with my great friend here tomorrow, uh, I hope that it gives you some kind of insight into what we do, and I hope that you get something from it. If you think I'm a wanker, you're not a wanker. I don't care. Yeah. God bless you. Peace.